a review of the care of all three babies was done. And uh, there was nothing uh, in common that we could pin this three deaths um, on. Um, but the staffing analysis did um, identify that Lucy Letby was on shift for those three episodes. And did that worry you? Well, I think I can remember um, saying, oh, no, it can't be Lucy, not nice Lucy. I don't recall the first time that I met Lucy Letby. She started work in 2012. She didn't strike me as too different to most um, nurses on the unit. You didn't have any worries about her doing the job? I don't think uh, anybody did. It, it's something that nobody really wants to uh, consider, it, you know, that a member of staff might be harming the babies under your care. It was the first time I started to have some concerns about the unusual nature of the collapses and the deaths. I emailed the unit manager after this death in October and um, asked to discuss Lucy Letby and her association with the deaths. We've obtained previously unseen hospital documents, including the response from the unit manager. She says it is unfortunate that Lucy Letby was on duty. However, each cause of death was different and some were poorly prior to their arrival on the unit. What do you read from that? She was intimating that um, the fact that Lucy Letby was present each time was an unfortunate coincidence. She couldn't make that jump to even consider uh, that somebody on her unit was, was harming babies intentionally. Some of the babies didn't respond to resuscitation quite how we would have expected them to. Most babies, you'd get a heart rate back and uh, they'd start, uh, the breathing would get better. Um, but that didn't happen in these cases um, like you'd expect, which was unusual. It was quite surreal uh, because we had these concerns and uh, as a group our concerns were rising and um, there's no communication from senior managers in the trust. To be clear, these babies, the triplet babies, were in very good health. Mm -hmm. Consecutive days. Mm. Can you remember what went through your mind on those two days? Slight disbelief, really, that it could be happening, and a little bit of anger and confusion, and a feeling of, we really need to do something about this. And I spoke to her towards the end of the meeting and said how tired and upset she must be after two days of this, and I hoped that she was going to have a restful weekend. And she turned to me and said, um, no, I'm back on shift tomorrow, which struck me as being um, incredible, really. The other staff were very traumatised by all of this, crumbling before your eyes almost, and um, she was quite happy and confident to come into work on the Saturday. I challenged her. I, I said, well, are you saying that you're making this decision against the wishes of seven consultant paediatricians? And she said yes. And uh, I said, well, if you're making this decision, are you taking responsibility for anything that might happen tomorrow to any other of our babies? And she said yes. And um, the phone call stopped shortly afterwards. We had a number of meetings with senior management. It was quite clear that uh, they weren't going to budge and uh, they didn't think appropriate to go to the police at that stage. Instead, the hospital asked the Royal College of Paediatrics and Child Health to look at what had been going on in the unit. 
In November, the college called for the hospital to conduct a thorough external independent review of each unexpected neonatal death. But the deaths weren't investigated fully. Is this a cover-up? I don't know how you'd define a cover-up, but um, to us, the, the evidence in front of us was quite clear. It felt that like trying to engineer some sort of narrative a way out of this that didn't involve going to the police. If you want to call that a cover-up, then that's a cover-up. Tony Chambers concluded the meeting with a statement to us saying that we were to apologise to Lucy Letby and that a line had been drawn uh, and that we were not to cross that line and if we were to cross the line, there would be consequences. Uh, that was the intention of the executives, uh, was to somehow close this case. In early 2018, Dr Breary was reviewing the baby's notes for the police. He found evidence the infant had been poisoned. A blood test showed the baby had high levels of insulin. It had been missed by a junior doctor. It was the first sight I had of this result and um, it made me feel sick, actually, thinking about it. There was a baby case in front of me in which it was quite clear that this baby had been poisoned by insulin. And the nursing record supported the fact that Lucy Letby was present. Was this a significant missed opportunity that when those lab results weren't really flagged at the time. Do you think that was a, a missed opportunity? Yes, yes. Um, in an ideal world, you'd hope that the lab would flag it so it would be reviewed by somebody senior. Um, that didn't happen. It's been said there's no smoking gun in, in the Lucy Letby trial, but these insulin cases get close to it, do they, for you? They were a smoking gun for these babies, for sure, and um, I, I don't have any doubt that um, Lucy Letby um, harmed these babies. Have you ever thought that there could be some other explanation for all of this and, and that Lucy Letby is innocent? Uh, well, that was the journey we went on in the first year before we finally asked her to be removed from the neonatal unit. That was a year of looking for all those alternative explanations. And we excluded all those things until we got down to one point, which was, was Lucy Letby. Can expectant mothers coming into the unit have confidence? I, I think those parents can expect um, as high a level of care on our unit than any other unit in the country. It's upsetting, this. Mm. We've got through a um, particularly hard time, and uh, I think we owe it uh, to the families um, for them to know that the staff care.